All right, so here we are on our LAEX 2K10 CAS Hub 1 server. And the first thing we need to do is enable network load balancing on this server. And we need to enable it on our LAEX 2K10 CAS Hub 2 server as well. We're just going to demonstrate it on the one, but you have to duplicate this same action on the secondary server. So we type server manager command cmd dash i nlb. It does say that server manager cmd is deprecated and that it's not guaranteed to be supported. You can also enable it through the server manager. You can enable it through PowerShell. There's all sorts of ways you can enable network load balancing. This just seemed to be the easiest to me, so I threw it into a command prompt. And we can see that the installation succeeded. And so at this point, we would perform the same task on the other server. We close out. And the next part is to open up our network load balancing manager. You can see some log entries down at the bottom as I was working with this and configuring it, making sure everything was working properly. Once I was convinced that it all worked properly, I deleted everything and started again. So that's the only reason for the messages down in the logs below. To start with, you right click and choose new cluster, and you put in the name of the host. So in this case, the host is CASHUB1. This will show us our two different interfaces on this system. We have NLB network and public network. They're both utilizing similar network address schemes. In a production network, you might put these literally on two separate networks if you choose. That would separate the traffic between them. At this point, we can see some of the default settings. And for the most part, through this wizard, we're just going to keep the default settings. This is not a lesson on how to configure network load balancing. So we're just going to set it up so that it's functional for our CAS array. You can see that we have those two networks, NLB network and public network. One thing to take note of is the priority up at the top. The priority is 1. When we set this up on our secondary server, you want to make sure that the priority is set to 2. So this just makes it clear which one is the primary system. We click Next. And now it asks us to enter in the IP address of our cluster. Now again, this probably should have been set up initially through DNS. You indicate a name for the cluster, and you give it an IP address at that time. So in our case, we click Add. The IP address we've chosen is 10.1.1.100. We indicate the subnet mask and say OK. We click Next. Everything checks out. We put in the full internet name, which in our case is mail.c2cbullet.com. And you can see that there are different cluster operation modes, unicast, multicast, IGMP multicast. Each of these means something different in terms of the configuration. And again, we're not going to go into great detail. We're going to leave Unicast, and the article that is mentioned at the end in my favorite supporting resources does go into a little bit more detail on that. However, if you'd like to know more about network load balancing, I would encourage you to do some research on these different cluster operation modes. NLB is not just used for CAS servers. It's used for other servers and services like Internet Information Services and so on. So if you find this fascinating that it's been there all along and perhaps you've never even had a chance to work with it, then by all means, take the time to deep dive on NLB. We click Next. Here you can see Defined Port Rules. It's typically recommended that we be more specific than this when setting up rules. We're going to leave the default because it's the least restrictive solution at this point for a lab setup. But in a production environment, you might narrow this down to the literal protocols that you're going to be using, whether it's HTTP or secure socket layers and so on. We click Finish. And we have to give it a moment to see if it all worked out OK. Sometimes you might get an error when you set this up, and you might have to go back and reconfigure things, make sure everything is configured properly. All right, and we've got green. So that's a good starting point. We see everything's up and running, and the status is enabled. At this point, let's add the second CAS Hub server to the mix. 
And again, we have the same setup on that CAS Hub server with the NLB network and the public network. And we have network load balancing installed. So we right click the mail.c2cbullet.com and click add host to cluster. We need to put in the name of the host that's going to be added to the cluster, LAEX 2K10 CAS Hub 2. There we see the two networks again. We click Next. We can see the priority is number two. We click Next. We keep everything as the default and click Finish. And we're up and running. You can see that the secondary server was added in. So we're pretty much good to go at this point. We have both systems ready. The only thing that's recommended at this point is that we enable IP forwarding on the network adapters for both the CAS Hub 1 server and the CAS Hub 2 server. So there's the net sh command to help us to do that. We can just open up PowerShell, type net sh, interface IPv4, set interface, and in our case it's the NLB network. We name these ourselves. You can name it whatever you'd like. And then forwarding equals enabled. And that's pretty much it. So at this point, let's open up the exchange management shell. We're going to create the CAS array at this point. So we type new dash client access array. We give it a name. In this case, we'll call it LA CAS Array. And you'd certainly want to set one up in New York in this scenario so that the CAS Hub server in New York is also configured properly with network load balancing. We put in the FQDN, mail.c2cbullet.com, and we hit enter. We should have put in the site as well, but being that we didn't, it asks for the site. The site is LA. It's always nice that it prompts you instead of just giving you a failure for forgetting a part of the commandlet's parameters. And we can see that it sets up the LA CAS array for the site LA. There's the FQDN. And we can see that we have both members in there, CAS Hub 1 and CAS Hub 2. And here we see some yellow warning information. None of it looks readable. And so as long as everything's working, I wouldn't give this too much attention. There's more that has to be done to configure the client access server array. So let's clear the screen. The next part of the process again is to establish on the database itself that we need to use that CAS array. And that's because the database, which is part of a DAG, was configured prior to the CAS array being set up. So we type set dash mailbox database. We provide the name of the database. LAEX 2K10 MB1 database. And then dash RPC client access server. And then we put in the FQDN, mail.c2cbullet.com. And we hit enter. It's a strange warning that it actually provides back because it says it completed successfully, but no settings have been modified. If we actually check the database itself using the get-mailbox database and then the name of the database with a formatted list, we can scroll up and we can see the RPC client access server has indeed been changed to our mail.c2cbullet.com. So really the next part of the process and the way to test that everything's working properly is to take a client and to set up their Outlook with the mail.c2cbullet.com. And at that point, if they're configured to use the mail.c2cbullet.com for the address, and that's the cluster itself, the NLB cluster, then whether one server is up or the other one is up or both are up, it doesn't really matter. The NLB server will handle the load balancing side so that they both are given an equal amount of work at the same time, if one of those servers does go down, the client is not aware 
because they're still going to the same address. It's the mail.c2cbullet.com address either way. And so when they go to that address, if one of their servers happens to be down, it's the network load balancing solution that will make sure that the other CAS hub server can satisfy the request. And it's all completely unaware to the client, all without the client having to be aware that there's been a problem. OK, so let's jump back over to our slides and let's take a look at what C2C Bullet looks like at this point in order to provide true high availability for the entire organization.